Hey guys, in this video, let's talk about gradient boosting. Gradient boosting is an important machine learning algorithm, not only because it's widely used in industrial applications, but also because it's a winning solution for many machine learning competitions. In this video, we will look at some interview questions related to gradient boosting, and then we will look at what is gradient boosting, what are gradient boosted trees, and finally, we'll talk about actually boost. Okay, let's start with looking at some interview questions to give you a sense of what are the questions you might get in interviews. What is gradient boosting methods? Describe the architecture of gradient boosting. Which of the following are appropriate methods of addressing high variance in a gradient boosting model? Increase the number of trees, use L1 or L2, regularization, use randomly selected subsamples, none of the above. What is actually boost? After watching this video, you should be able to answer all these interview questions. All right, let's dive in. Okay, let's start with learning about gradient boosting. Gradient boosting is also known as gradient boosting machines or GBMs. It's an ensemble learning algorithm, which is widely used in industrial applications and machine learning competitions, as I mentioned earlier. It's also a supervised learning algorithm, which attempts to accurately predict a target by combining the estimates of a set of simpler and weaker learners. These weak learners learn sequentially, and the algorithm converts many weak learners into a complex learner. It's called gradient boosting because it uses a gradient descent procedure to minimize the loss when adding new learners to the ensemble. Here's a diagram showing how it works. We start with a naive model or a simple model. Then we use this naive model to make predictions. Once we get the predictions, we can calculate the loss based on the loss function. And then we train a new model based on the loss we calculated from the previous prediction. And then we add this new model to ensemble, we make predictions again. So you can see that it's an iterative or sequential process that we keep adding new models to the ensemble and the predictions will be improved. Okay, now we have a basic idea of how gradient boosting works. Let's look at gradient boosted trees. Gradient boosted trees is a gradient boosting algorithm when the weak learner is classification and the regression trees or CART. It views decision trees in an iterative fashion using prediction residuals, which is the difference between the target and the predicted value. In each iteration, a new tree is fit on the residuals of the previous tree. Then the model improves as we are moving each tree more in the right direction while small updates. These updates are based on a loss gradient. The training process iteratively adding new trees that predict the residuals of previous trees that are then combined with the previous trees to make the final prediction. Now let's look at the algorithm in detail. Sometimes you might get interview questions about the architecture of gradient boosted trees. So it's helpful for you to know how the algorithm works step by step. So we start with a simple model to return a constant value. We start using a decision tree root node, a tree with a single leaf node as the first model. Let's call it F0x. For each tree i from 1 to m, where m is a predefined maximum number of trees or maximum number of iterations, there are a few things we need to do. We first compute the residual ri of that tree, and then we calculate the learning rate alpha. Based on the residuals and alpha, then we build a new tree. Then we add this new tree to the ensemble, and then we continue the next iteration to build the new trees, and finally we combine the predictions of all trees to output the final prediction. That's a general idea of how it works. Now let's look at each step in detail. We first compute the residual ri. ri is a negative gradient of the loss function with respect to the prediction of the previous tree. Here's the equation of ri. ri is a negative value of the partial derivative of the loss function lyfx with respect to fx, which is the prediction of the previous tree. For example, if we are using mean squared error for the loss function, then our loss function lyfx is the sum of squares of the difference between y and fx. y is the actual label, and fx is the predicted value. Once we have the residual ri, then we fit a new tree to predict ri using all the features available to us. The idea is that subsequent learners are trained to predict errors of the previous prediction. So our model will be improved because we keep correcting our previous mistakes. And let's say hi, x, r, i minus 1 is a function to predict ri. So this function is similar to the gradient of ri with respect to the prediction fx. So if we are using the mean squared error loss, then the gradient of ri 
is precisely the residual, the difference between y and fx. The next step is simply update the prediction. Our new prediction in iteration i will be the prediction of the previous tree plus alpha multiplied by hi. Alpha is a learning rate, typically a small value between 0.01 and 1. And here we scale hi by alpha to update the model incrementally by taking small steps, which helps avoid overfitting. Finally, once we reach the maximum number of trees or the number of iterations, then we output fmx. The overall prediction is given by a weighted sum of the collection. So these are the three steps of the algorithm. If you get an interview question about the architecture of gradient boosting or gradient boosted trees, then you should be able to draw this diagram and explain what happens in each iteration. Okay, now let's move forward to the hyperparameters of gradient boosted trees. Boosting reduces bias and increases variance by increasing the complexity of weak learners. It can overfit. And by tuning the hyperparameters, overfitting can be prevented. Here are the hyperparameters we can tune. The first one is number of trees, m, or the number of iterations. Increasing m reduces the error on the training set, so it will reduce the bias. But the setting too high may lead to overfitting. Maximum depth of trees is another hyperparameter we can tune. Increasing the maximum depth will make the model more complicated and more likely to overfit. Another hyperparameter we can tune is learning rate alpha. Small learning rate, when alpha is less than 0.1, yield the dramatic improvements in model's generalization ability. But small learning rate means increasing computational time, both during training and prediction. So there's a trade-off we need to make. We need to find the optimal learning rate for our dataset. Another hyperparameter is the subsample size. We randomly sample a fraction f of the size of the training data prior to growing trees. Smaller values of f introduce randomness into the algorithm and help prevent overfitting. Now let's look at one of the interview questions we mentioned at the beginning of this video. Which of the following are appropriate methods of addressing high variance in a gradient boosting model? The first one is increase the number of trees. Increasing the number of trees will not help prevent overfitting. In fact, it will lead to overfitting if the number is too high. The second choice is to use L1 or L2 regularization. This will help prevent overfitting because adding regularization term is basically adding penalized term to the loss function. The next choice is to use randomly selected subsamples. As I mentioned earlier, when we select a subsample from the training data, we introduce randomness to the algorithm and that will help prevent overfitting. So the second choice and the third choice will be the right answer to this question. Now let's summarize the pros and cons of gradient boosted trees. Gradient boosted trees have some advantages. It produces very accurate models, and often it outperforms random forest in accuracy. There is no data preprocessing required. It often works well with categorical and numerical values as is. It can also handle missing data well. Imputation is not needed before we feed the data into the model. There are also some downsides of gradient boosted trees. Gradient boosting is a sequential process that can be slow to train. It's also computationally expensive. It often requires many trees over a thousand, which can be time and memory exhaustive. Another downside of gradient boosted trees is that it sacrifices interpretability for accuracy. It's less interpretive in nature. For example, it is self-explanatory to follow the path that the decision tree takes to make prediction. But following the path of thousands of trees in gradient boosted trees is much harder. So in terms of interpretability, it's not as good as decision trees. Finally, let's talk about XGBoost. What is XGBoost? XGBoost is short for Extreme Gradient Boosting. It's the most popular implementation of gradient boosting. XGBoost is also the winning solution for many Keiko competitions. According to its documentation, XGBoost is an optimized distributed gradient boosting library designed to be highly efficient, flexible, and portable. The goal of this library is to push the extreme of the computation limits of machines to provide a scalable, portable, and accurate library. XGBoost provides a parallel tree boosting that solves many data science problems in a fast and accurate way. The same code runs a major distributed environment and can solve problems beyond billions of examples. So you know XGBoost is a library implementing the gradient boosting algorithm and is scalable, portable, and accurate. 
As I mentioned earlier, one of the downsides of gradient boosting is that it's a sequential process and it can be slow to train. Actually, Boost integrates several approximations and tricks that can speed up the training process significantly. There are some algorithm enhancements implemented in XGBoost. It minimizes a regularized objective function, then combines a convex loss function and a penalty term for model complexity, which helps avoid overfitting. It's efficient in terms of handling missing data, which simplifies the data pre-processing step. It has built-in cross-validation capacity at each iteration, which prevents the need to calculate the number of boosting iterations needed. There are also system optimizations that has done in XGBoost to increase the speed of training. For example, parallelization. It uses parallelized tree building. The tree pruning process uses depth first approach and it prunes the tree in a backward direction, unlike the stopping criterion for tree splitting used by gradient boosting machines, which is greedy in nature. It also has some hardware optimizations such as cache awareness and out-of-core computing to increase the speed of training and prediction. So these are the improvements ActiveBoot has done to make it scalable, portable, and accurate.